Hello guys, in this video we'll take a closer look at dates in PowerShell. So to get current date, you can use get date and it returns a string value of the current date. So I could store that in a variable now equals get date and I could just print now and it prints current date. I could do now dot add days minus one and that'll give you yesterday which is Saturday and I get a plus one for the next day right so that's very simple um, I just want to show you if I did just get date and get member all these methods uh, which return different values so uh, you could do add days add hours add milliseconds add minutes add months add seconds add ticks and add years right you could add any of those so if I just do add years one, so that's 2020, right? So very simple. Now, after the add functions, uh, you have compare to equals so to, to verify whether, so equals returns a Boolean value. You can pass two dates and it'll check if they're, um, so if I do dollar now dot equals, and I can say dollar now. And this should be true. If I do get date, I probably need to pass that into another set of parentheses and add a dollar. Right? That's false. Because uh, this gets the current date and time, which is like right this moment. And I've already stored some static date uh, in now. So it's going to compare the two of them and go, I don't know what that is. Right? Uh, let's look at a couple of other things to more to do with display right if I do dollar now and display or I probably just need to do it with get date display hint and I could just display the date right uh, this doesn't have any of the time or I could do just time it only displays the time right very good if you want to work with uh, you know depending on a use case it, this could be very handy we also looked at some of the other methods. Let me show you here. So all of the methods after uh, subtract binary, yeah. So after the equals, um, we've got the get date time formats, uh, get hash, get type, uh, and get type code. So after the comparison operators, the more significant ones are conversion ones, conversion functions, or conversion methods. So these are all methods where you can convert a date to a boolean or character or double format or file time format or to integer format you know all these different formats and then we just saw display hint uh, and then these are all properties so you could just do dollar now dot ticks right and it'll return how many ticks uh, has passed and I could also do seconds and it'll tell you how many seconds have passed. Sorry, second. 38 seconds have passed in this minute. Uh, you could also do time of the year, dollar now, dot time of day. So it's 20 hours, 2051. That's that's the time now and 38 seconds. Uh, well, this is a static time. Now is a variable that's storing a point in time time, not the current time. And that's how many ticks and milliseconds uh, there are in that time variable and then days is 0.8 of a day which is you know like 8 o'clock in the night is 86% of the day and then total hours 20.8 which is that 20.8 uh, if you convert the 51 well the 60 minute time to 100% total minutes total seconds so this is very very good very this could be very very handy I've worked on some projects where uh, we had to do some uh, manipulation with time and this gives you a very powerful toolkit to be able to work with time now before we end this call I want to take you bring your attention to a couple things uh, first one is uh, creating a time span so I can say so the first one of those is dollar hour later equals new time span and I want to say minutes 
60, right? So if I do dollar hour later, it returns an object or it returns time of the day format and it says one hour. So that's one hour time timestamp, right? So if I do get date, this is the current time, 8.59.17. So if I do dollar get date plus dot add, I keep saying plus and dollar hour later. So now it returns 9.59 instead of 8.59.30, well 8.59.37 uh, because at the moment it's uh, 20 seconds have passed. Right, that's very interesting. Just to create, so working with dates is one thing, but this gives you power to create time spans uh, as you need them, right? To, to be able to add them, to be able to uh, work with them, manipulate seconds, milliseconds and whatnot. So that's number one. So you can use set date to set the current date. I'm not going to do that on my computer at the moment, right? Now, um, I could do a set date to any, any date really. So I could say set date to get date and then it'll, it'll get the current date and set it to, to the current date or I can say set date to get date dot add an hour later variable which I just created. So it's going to uh, add uh, an hour to my time. Uh, interesting I bring that up because today was daylight saving time so we're, we're one hour late from whenever it was uh, this time yesterday. Alright, so the last thing I want to do is uh, show you something else that's get culture. Now this is very important with uh, the locale setup. So this uh, shows you what locale is uh, my computer using, what language uh, or the display name for this locale and uh, LCID is the locale ID. There's also a variable or, or environment variable uh, that exists in PowerShell that's set to ENUS already so uh, when you install Windows this is set uh, or when you install or update PowerShell uh, as well uh, you can change that but when you initially install your computer uh, when Cortana asks you what time zone you're in or what country you're in and uh, as you make a selection it sets this automatically right so that's pretty much I had in mind about working with dates in PowerShell. To start a conversation, leave a comment to this video. Hit the bell icon if you'd like to be notified every time I upload a video. Don't be a miser. Share it with others.